call this meeting to order. April 23rd, City Commission of Aztec. Um, if you would all please stand. Judge Gray has uh, been kind enough to do the invocation for us tonight. Judge Gray, we're gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet and do the business for the City of Aztec. Please be with the commissioners tonight and with people in the audience. Let us be so grateful that we can govern our own selves and live in a country that allows us to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I salute the flag of the state of New Mexico and the sea of the world for our friendship and humanity. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Carla, would you please call the roll? Mayor Snover. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Five. Here. Commissioner Sykes. Here. Commissioner Randall. Here. Commissioner Lewis. Here. All present. Next is agenda approval. If there are any items that do not meet the approval for being heard on this evening's agenda, now is the time to remove those items. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion. Mayor, I move to approve this evening's agenda as given. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Next is consent agenda. Items placed on the consent agenda will be voted upon with one motion. If any item proposed does not meet the approval of all commissioners, a commissioner may request that the item be heard under items from consent agenda. Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda. Mayor, I move to approve this evening's ag consent agenda as given. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And our proclamation. I don't know, do I have that, Carla? No proclamation. It's not one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that's why there's nothing under <laughs> proclamation. <laughs> Imagine that. My apologies. Okay, um, moving right along to presentations. First is San Juan County Historical Society annual report given by Patricia Tharp. Good evening, Ms. Tharp. Yes. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Mayor Snover, members of the commission, and Aztec city officials. I am Patricia, or Patty Tharp, president of the San Juan County Historical Society and I've come before you tonight to give our annual State of the Society. The mission of the Historical Society is to collect and preserve historical documents pertaining to San Juan County in an archival setting so they will be available to future generations. This includes past copies of the Aztec Independent Review and Daily Times newspapers that are in huge archival boxes organized by year and stored on shelves reaching to the ceiling. Historic maps, a library of books about our county's history, family history collections and records from closed businesses that have been donated, and items that the San Juan County Courthouse has passed on for our custodial care including, for example, early tax receipts. We so appreciate the city of Aztec providing our facility and all of the support given to us to maintain the building. As you know, our office and archives is located at 201 North Main Street here in Aztec in the old fire station. Our archival space is only 829 square feet. And truly, I must say, we are beginning to burst at the seams. We have run out of space, which limits our capacity to accept anything of size, including the county's overflow historic records. We are definitely at a crossroads. We need a larger facility 
climate controlled, of course, and at least 2,500 square feet. If we had a larger facility, we could grow our collections, expand our library, provide a research room that would also provide for our growing Hispanic research resources, dedicate a room for display and preservation of historic maps, provide an internship for junior high and high school students, and accommodate more than two or three volunteers at a time for projects such as a countywide obituary index. I am very pleased, however, to report that our membership has more than doubled over the last 18 months to approximately 150 members, and the attendance at our meetings has in some instances quadrupled. The good news is that the public does care about and is interested in our county's history. The society recognizes contributions made by county citizens and designates landmarks that have played a significant role. So far, our designated sites, whereby a plaque has been erected and dedicated, are Our Lady of Guadalupe Chapel at Navajo Dam, and the old La Plata Schoolhouse. On October the 19th of this year, we will dedicate the old hydropower plant house on McCormick Road in Farmington. The Society also publishes every year or so a booklet about some facet of San Juan County's history. The subjects have been broad and varied. Our brochure, and let me leave one with you, lists all 18, Thank you. including this year's, The Lost Communities of Navajo Dam, Volume 1, about Los Martinez, public, um, <coughs> written by yours, yours truly. <laughs> Volume 2 will come out in 2020, and it will cover the lost communities of Los Pinos, Rosa, and Los Arbeles. Before construction began on Navajo Dam in 1958, approximately 200 families were told that they would have to vacate their homes and ranchitos and find another place to live. And this is their story. Los Martinez was raised R-A-Z-E-D for field dirt and construction site offices and Los Pinos, Rosa, and Los Arbeles were inundated when the waters backed up. We host five meetings a year and our guest speakers present a wealth of knowledge about <coughs> interesting and notable people, events, and places that have shaped the history of our county. Last year's programs were Taylor Brick Making in San Juan County, presented by Tom and Beverly Taylor, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the McDonald family coming to San Juan County by several McDonald descendants, the 30th anniversary of our society, where we honored all of our char charter members who are still alive, including Mary McKee, Mary Lou Wayborn and Tim Gordon. The gem in our own backyard, the Navajo Reservation, was presented by Dr. Carol Clore, and Billy the Kid by Farmington Museum's dynamic curator, Jeffrey Richardson. We also had our first ever historical house tour at 665 West Main in Farmington. We'd like to make this a future annual or biannual event. If you know of a historic home where the owners would be willing for us to have a tour, please let me know. This year's programs are equally impressive. In fact, our first meeting on February the 13th had a record-breaking attendance of over 200 when I spoke at the Aztec Senior Center about all four of the lost communities of Navajo Dam. Our April 10th meeting was also very well attended when Bart Wilsey gave a fascinating presentation 
about Farmington here and now with an, that he accompanied with a slideshow. In June, Dr. Jimmy Miller of Aztec will speak about Aztec's history. In August, the Hamlins about La Plata's history. And in October, Judy Klein about the history of the Fruitland trading post that her parents founded. We try and provide an interesting field trip every year for our members as well. And in October of 28, Dr. Carol Clor led one to the Navajo Reservation, which included stops at the Navajo uh, chap Chapter House in Shiprock, the art collection in the lobby of the Public Service Hospital, and the historic Twodlina Trading Post, where owner Mark Winters arranged for us to see local Navajo women carding and weaving. The society is operated with volunteers only, and we are most fortunate. They are so enthusiastic and dedicated to preserving the history of San Juan County. Our funds come from membership dues, donations, and the sale of our books. Please come by our office sometime. We'd love to show you what we're all about. In conclusion, I would like to thank again the Aztec City Commission for your continued support. The San Juan County Historical Society in 2019 will continue to publish and reprint our books that are so popular with county residents, to designate sites of historical significance, to ensure that the documents in our custodial care are preserved in an archival setting, and to open our doors to all who want to delve into their families or our county's history, be it about an old business, a pioneer home, an old school, an old church, all of which are an enduring legacy for the residents of San Juan County today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, you Ms. Starr. <coughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you again. And our next presentation is uh, Aztec Boys and Girls Club, Mr. Mike Patch. Mr. Patch, how are you? I'm doing just fine, Mr. Mayor. How are you? Good. Good to see you. All right. My PowerPoint's up there on the... I'll turn so I can read it as well. <laughs> Come to find out, my eyesight just isn't what it used to be. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, Mike Patch, I'm here reporting for the Aztec Boys and Girls Club. It's part of our annual duties. It's part of also our annual pleasure to share with you some of the things that the kids in the club do and the status of the club and where we're going for the future. As always, our mission is to inspire and enable all youth, especially those that need us the most, to realize their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring citizens. I'd like to point out, if I can, this young man right here. The picture isn't great on the screen, but you can see him on what's in front of you. That's Devin Pauley. He's been a staff member at the club. He's moving into being a senior staff member now, but he's been a kid at the club since he was six years old. He's now 18 and accounted himself very well at the state level in our annual Youth of the Year competitions. So he represented not just the club, but Aztec and did a did us proud, so I'd like to recognize Devin there. Um, this past year, our membership was about 10% of the um, population of the school system. About 306 kids were our registered members. On any given day, we have between 109 and 85 kids in the club. Um, in addition to that, we served through our outreach efforts with Kintil, at various organizations, with the uh, league system that we're a part of. We served about 11 or about 1,200 other people. So we served about 1,500 people in the community this last year. Now I've got to rely on my notes. <laughs> um, last year, I came to this commission and I talked to most of you individually about negotiations we had going on with the other two clubs in our region. Um, I also, uh, we were also finishing up a very difficult financial year. Um, this year I'm proud to report 
Um, finances are on a much more stable basis. We've changed some of the way we've done some things. Um, unfortunately, that meant we had to impose some fees that we never had before, but at the same time, we were able to double our scholarships so there are more kids that are not paying anything than had previously. Um, the partnership with the Farmington Boys and Girls Club and the Bloomfield Boys and Girls, Girls Club, uh, we continue to work in partnership on the mayor's ball, um, on a league system, um, but they have decided to move forward with a acquisition by Farmington of Bloomfield. They will be joining forces and become one club system. Um, Aztec will be remaining independent, at least for the near future. Part of the reason for that um, was uh, in doing due diligence. Um, we found some old issues that we're trying to resolve right now. We're very close to resolving, I'm proud to say. Um, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. It means we're paying out some 10-year-old um, uh, retirement funds to people that were once employed by the club. So um, we're giving back to the community a little bit. It just was not planned. Um, and as a result, uh, because of the fear that there could be other things out there, uh, we decided to call off the merger until we got everything settled. But as I mentioned, we're about settled at this point. Just working through the IRS. Um, in addition to that, as I mentioned, we're having a much stronger financial year. And we're looking at a way, because we are not merging with the other clubs, we're looking at ways we in, can engage this community more and uh, reassess ourselves as the club for Aztec and the surrounding area. As always, we are Aztec, and our kids are the Aztec future. If you look at the need in the community, 71% of our members are considered at risk. That means they either have a CYFD file that's active, um, they have come from a single parent family, they're dealing with parental incarceration, or their parents' um, financial situation, either permanently or due to loss of work, um, put them in that category. So we work with everybody, but our kids represent the need in the community commonly. Um, also, as you, I'm sure you're aware, New Mexico is ranked by the Annie E. Casey Foundation as 50th in education. And two years ago, the um, organization Wall Street 24-7 named this county as the second worst in the country to raise children. So how do we fight that? We do it through active programs, Power Hour, which is homework help right after school, STEM programs, which include science and engineering and connects and fun stuff and rocket engines and all sorts of things. We do group mentoring and lifestyle programs where the kids have an opportunity to work um, and get their feelings known and, and be directly with caring, trained adults who can help them. Um, we do museum visits. I know it doesn't sound like much, but we take our kids every summer down to Albuquerque. We take our kids up to Mesa Verde. Um, this year we've got Explorer, which is the science museum um, in Albuquerque, coming and bringing their traveling exhibits to Aztec. So every one of our kids um, will get a chance this summer to go through Explorer and have hands-on science experience. We summer reading. We do recycling and service programs. We even have a new partnership with our good friends over here from Waste Management where we're going to teach the kids about recycling this summer and hopefully get the, hopefully get the community uh, excited about starting recycling programs through the kids. In looking at how we measure that impact, it's hard in any one year to say, hey, we changed a child's life. You look at a child over the course of a decade, over the course of a lifetime, and I can point to Devin, Devin Pauly as a sure sign of a change we made in a child's life. Um, but on the short scale, it's hard to point that out. But we can say every time the kids are in the club, it is a success because the kids are there with people who are trained to support them. The kids are there with people that care about them. The kids are not at home alone, and we know every kid in the club is safe. So every day a kid comes to the club, it's a success. BGCA nationally has actually done studies, and they find a kid that attends at least 100 sessions a year, scores higher, and has a higher income later in life. 
one of the things we're looking at is that 10% number. About 10% of the kids in the Aztec schools come to the club. We would like to build our capacity to handle more. So we're looking in the next few years of trying to get to a point where we could handle double the kids that we do now. As part of that, we want to be a bigger part of the community. So we want to reach out and seek the alumni. Yesterday, I signed up a six-year-old for the club whose dad was telling me about when he came to the old club on Simmons. We want to reach out to these people and bring them in and hear their voices, hear their stories, and help get them excited about the future of the club and motivated to help us. We're looking for volunteers, people that can help around the club. We're looking for new board members. If you know anybody who's interested in leadership, we would love to engage them and bring them on because only through strong leadership in the community can we do greater things. We're looking for mentors for the kids. And of course, we're looking for those community connections. We want to seek every way we can to do more with less. And in this time of uncertainties about the um, county's future financially and everything else, we want to make sure that we are strong and can support these kids, um, whether it's an up cycle or a down cycle. Today, 83 kids were in the club. That means that the support the city gives, whether it's through the physical building itself or financially, the support the city gives help paid for an ice pack for the kid that ran on skates into the right smack into the front of the bleachers. Um, it means that you supported the staff member who taught power hour and help the kids with their homework. Means there were balls for sports programs and paint and paper for art programs. Um, it means that there was internet for the teens because we've got to bribe them to get them to uh, uh, participate in other programs. So we <laughs> trade time on the internet for time and programs. Um, next me week it will mean we're getting our bus reconditioned so we can take the kids this summer to the Bloomfield pool or up to see the wolves at Wolfwood. So city funding is essential to us and it has made what we do possible. So on that note, I would like to say thank you. 46 years we've been in this community. This, this coming November will be 46. This is our 46th year and it is not possible without the support the community members have given us, the parents have given us, thank you. She has a little one in the club. I do. They're fantastic. Um, and it's not possible without the support the city of Aztec, um, both the employees and the commission have given us traditionally. You make our ability to be advocates and supporters for all youth, especially those who need us most. You make it possible. So thank you very much. There any questions, concerns, issues, things we can talk about? No. Okay. Yes. So. Sounds like you're doing a great thank job. You, Mike. Keep yep. it up. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We do appreciate it. And I know most of you have been in the club. I think all of you have been in the club. But I'd love to invite you back again. We're doing new things all the time. And come on in and see what we're up to. All right. Will do. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. Um, this year I was fortunate enough to represent Boys and Girls Clubs of America and the state of New Mexico in Washington, D.C. Um, and visited our um, senators and our congressional office. And I left behind them uh, just a, a little picture book of kids' activities in the club. And I would like to leave one at the city as well so that okay. if anyone ever comes in and says, what is, is there for kids here, you can say, we treat our kids well. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, sir. Okay. <coughs> Next on our agenda is citizens' input. Thank you. Okay. All right. We have a couple of crossouts, I think. So. Um, There's. Oh, oh. They were the zone right, change. okay, I got you. Okay. Um, is that Mrs. Ms. Potter, Zona Potter? Did I say that right? Yes. All right. Good evening, Ms. Potter. Good evening. 
Thank you, Mayor and City Council members for allowing me to speak. My name is Zona Potter and I live in Pioneer Heights subdivision by McWilliams Road. I've lived, I live about 300 yards away from my work and um, formal, formerly known as Good Samaritan Nursing Home. When it is possible, it is very convenient for me to use McWilliams Road to get to and from my work. But even though I drive a four-wheel drive vehicle, a lot of the time I have to use Hydro Plant Road down by Kugler Junior High where it, the school zone is backed up onto 550 to Oliver to get to my work because McWilliams Road is such in bad condition. I have, I have even seen school buses have difficult times using it as well. The manholes, the potholes, no, they're not potholes, but <laughs> you know, and um, also when I bought my property and they told me that it would be paved within two to three years. It has now been eight years and still nothing has been done. It would be very beneficial to a lot of Aztec residents if someone improves, improvements could be made on that street. Thank you for your time. And I also have a picture of the manhole that is in the middle of the road that is, I seem to be very dangerous. It's up about this high right now. And I think that it needs to be taken care of. Massey? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's like <coughs> six yeah. inches. We're not familiar with that road. It's it's up there. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Potter. Thank you. Steve. Yeah. I know we talked about that the other day. Mm -hmm. So. Um, okay. And that's it for citizen input. Now we are getting ready to move into <coughs> item 11, quasi-judicial hearings or land use. We have three on the agenda tonight. Uh, the first one is a variance 19-01, a request to reduce the front setback from 25 feet to 21 feet in the R2 multiple family dwelling district. The second one is a zone change 19-01, zone change request from MH mobile home zoning district to the R2 multiple family zoning district. And the third one is a conditional use permit 19-01, conditional use permit for dog grooming kennel at 1603 West Aztec Boulevard. <coughs> so bear with me. I have a, a bit of a script to read. So, okay. The following hearing procedure is for all hearings on tonight's agenda, all three of these. A land use hearing registration form is located on the clerk's table. For those who wish to receive a copy of the results from this hearing, you must provide your full name and current mailing address in order to receive a copy of the land use hearing order. If you wish to testify and provide comment on the matter at issue, you must register with the clerk on the land use hearing registration form and be sworn in with staff, the applicant, identified parties, witnesses, and interested persons that are identified by the parties and or interested persons wishing to testify as indicated on the land use hearing registration form. So we are, see, I'm going to read the whole thing and then we'll kind of back up and, and move into the hearing. So once we move into the land use hearing part of the meeting, um, there'll be some, some things that we talk about. Is there a challenge to the jurisdiction of the City of Aztec Commissioners? Are there any conflicts of interest or personal biases to be cleared by a commission member? Have there been any ex parte contacts regarding the upcoming matters that a commission member needs to declare? And then we will swear in the parties and move into the order of presentations, which are as follows. The staff will summarize the staff report to the extent necessary to enable those present to understand the issues before the commissioners. And during that, the commission members may ask questions of staff and cross-examination by the applicant and parties can also occur. Second in the order of presentations is applicant to include their witness or witnesses have 15, up to 15 minutes to speak. The commission members may ask questions of said applicant. 
Uh, cross-examination by staff and parties. Witnesses may be cross-examined but do not have the authority to cross-examine. Third, are the parties to include their witness or witnesses, 10 minutes each. The commission members may ask questions of the parties. Cross-examination by staff and applicant. Witnesses may be cross-examined but do not have the authority to cross-examine. And then fourth, interested persons have five minutes each. The commission members may ask questions of interested persons. And there also can be cross-examination by staff, applicant, and parties, although interested persons may be cross-examined but do not have the authority to cross-examine. And then we will close hearing to testimony and make decisions and issue findings of fact and conclusions of law, move into closed session if necessary, uh, continue the public hearing until a specified time, or take the matter under advisement. Okay. So we are now moving into the land use hearing part of this meeting. Number one, is there a challenge to the jurisdiction of the City of Aztec Commissioners to hear any of the hearings on tonight's agenda? Seeing none. Are there any conflicts of interest or personal biases to be declared by a commission member? No. <coughs> no, sir. no. Hearing and seeing none. Third, have there been any ex parte contacts pro regarding the upcoming matters that a commission member needs to declare? No. no. Hearing and seeing none. Okay. Next, will the staff, the applicants, parties identified by commission, all witnesses, and any interested persons wishing to testify regarding the variance 19-01, zone change 19-01, and conditional use permit 19-01, please stand and raise your right hand. So anybody that's involved in these hearings, any one of the three, please go ahead and stand now and raise your right hand. Uh, will the staff, I'm sorry, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. yes. Please be seated. Thank you. Okay, our first one is A, variance 19-01, a request you reduce the front setback from 25 feet to 21 feet in the R2 multiple family dwelling district. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Good evening. So to briefly summarize variance 1901, this is a request from Helen Strader, who lives on 1405 Parkland Circle. The request comes before the City Commission because Ms. Strader would like to build a garage. However, building that garage encroaches on the front setback of the zoning district. So Ms. Strader is ask asking to encroach four feet within the front yard setback. So this is the property right here. This is what the, the property currently looks like. Current use is residential and it will stay residential. This is just to give you an idea of what the property looks like. So for the most part, a lot of the homes look very similar. Ms. Strader would like to build it out, add to the facade, uh, incorporate the garage not only to protect herself but also to protect her personal property via her car. So just to briefly summarize, um, city staff did not find this to be a significant deviation from the zoning code. It was a minimum easing. There was no safety issues that we identified, um, and therefore we're recommending approval. Okay. We will stand for questions. Does any, uh, any commissioners have any questions of Mr. Saavedra? No. 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 Um, the applicant, Mrs. Strader, is it Strader or Schrader? Strader, I'm sorry. Um, do you have any questions of Mr. Saavedra? Okay. Well, now you have, you're, you're welcome to, to come up to the podium and, um, you have 15 minutes to, I guess, uh, we can ask, you can kind of give your, Speak your piece, I guess, okay. <laughs> on this. I bought the, my home on uh, Parkland Circle last October. And one of the reasons I bought or chose that home was because I thought I could add a garage. And uh, my children are very insistent. They think I need the safety of a garage. And with all the ice last winter, I think I agree. <laughs> right. But that's about all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, ma'am. Um, does any any commission members <coughs> have any questions of Mr. Strader? No. No. Okay. Um, are there any any other staff or any other parties that wish to ask Ms. Strader any questions? There, is there anybody else here regarding this particular hearing that's appeared that wishes to speak? And we can determine where you kind of fall in the order. So we can seeing and hearing none. Um, I guess we can entertain a motion. Got a close oh, I'm sorry. You're right. We need to. <laughs> hearing is now officially closed to testimony, and we can open up discussion amongst ourselves. Um, does anybody have any anything they'd like to add to this? Any questions? No. Any concerns? No. Okay. No. Pretty simple. Um, mm -hmm. Hearing no no discussion or any questions, um, we're ready to make a motion. Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to move to approve variance 19-01, a request from Helen Schrader to reduce the front yard setback to 21 feet for property located at 1405 Parkland Circle, Aztec, New Mexico, 87410. Second. We have a motion and a second. Carla, would you please call the roll? Mayor Silver. Aye. Mayor Fontaine Fry. Aye. Commissioner Seitz. Aye. Commissioner Lewis. Aye. Commissioner Randall. Aye. Motion passes 5 to 0. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Schrader. Okay. Next up is, I apologize, uh, zone change 19-01. Mr. Saavedra. Mr. Mayor, um, <clears throat> zone change 1901 is a request to rezone the property from its current mobile home to multifamily. And this request comes forward to the Community Development Department um, in part because of code compliance and <clears throat> this is what the current structure looks like right now there's technically three addresses on the property mm. and how community go development got wind of this was there was actually a mobile home <coughs> that was basically stuffed into this structure so that's not up to code by any means um, as a result code enforcement was working with which is now the property owner, Aaron Fishburn, AMC, AMC, to bring this structure into compliance. In order to bring it fully into compliance, there's three addresses on this parcel of property, 1509, 1507, and 1505. If you look at the zoning code for the MH district, only one dwelling unit is allowed in the MH district. So right now, Community Development, City of Aztec, could not move forward with the building permit building application until it meets the requirements of the land use um, chapter 26. So this is what it looked like prior. So this is obviously not to code by any means. This is a health, safety, welfare issue. But again, it has been removed. Um, from the city standpoint, these are some other pictures with the structure that code compliance took. Obviously, this is not up to code. So this is the property surrounded by MH. But again, there's technically three addresses currently listed on this parcel. And again, if you look specifically at the MH district, this district is regulated to per per permit one mobile home and a normal residence accessory use, but not another dwelling in each lot. So it does not meet the current requirements. It's considered a legal non-conforming structure according to the zoning code. So what the applicant is, is willing to bring this structure up to code, but in part submit the zone change so that it has the right zoning district for the, the rest of the units. <coughs> These are the surrounding units. Again, this is an older image. So community development is rec recommending um, approval of the zone change from MH to multi-family it is considered a spot zone so that's one criteria that we had to look at um, however you look at the comprehensive plan the comprehensive co plan calls for a limited amount of mobile home uses um, in addition this brings it into compliance so that the property owner could actually work on that pro that home bring it up to certain standards so that somebody could actually occupy it assuming that the building division reviews it meets their standards gets a certificate of occupancy, and then somebody can occupy it. Um, and then there should hopefully not be any issues of health, safety, and welfare 
at 1509, 1507, and 1505 Martin. And with that, I will stand for questions. So um, I just want to make sure I'm clear. The, the plan is to, that the one picture, the mobile home that was kind of stuck into the end there is gone, obviously. Right. And the plan is to now rehab the, the brown structure, the house, Correct. and turn it into just a residential, just to rent it or to sell it or to do whatever. Correct. So the process goes right now, is, or how it went, was AM, AMF um, submitted a residential development permit. And when we reviewed it, we said, well, we got one big issue, the zoning. So if you want to go forward with it, if you want us to give our approval so that they can take the next step and go to San Juan County and start that process, you have to come into compliance with what's already there. Okay. And so the plan from AMF is to get it zone changed and then to continue working on it. Right now they haven't worked on it because of this underlying issue. Okay. Um, assuming that zoning is approved, we would approve the the residential building permit, San Juan County would get it, look at their building plans. What they do is that they would go actually inspect the unit and to make sure that that structure is safe so that somebody could inhabit it. At that time, they will give a certificate of occupancy so that somebody could live there. Utilities will ho be hooked up from the city of Aztec, and then this will be a dwelling unit oh, in okay. conformity. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I have one quick question, Mr. Vader. Is this, are you going to have one address, or is it continue to have three? So this, this, this one unit <coughs> has one address. This is actually 1509. Okay. Um, if you look at the, the zoning map, there is this structure right here. This is a duplex. Mm -hmm. That houses 1507 and 1505. Huh. So this one will retain one address, but these will retain their, their two other right. addresses. Okay. This structure right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Mayor. Yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Saavedra, um, so will the, the two duplexes, do they have to come up and meet code two or, I mean, or? As far as the building code, that hasn't been, there's been no issues that have been okay. brought forward to us. As far as we know, that this structure right here is in conformity with the building code not in conformity with the zoning code because again there's three different units technically on one piece of property and that is in complete violation with the mobile home district so to answer your question in short answer no okay they're okay this they're unit is okay this unit is is not and it was it was just because of the the there's other issues besides the mobile home that all those other things that you showed there yes okay yes so yeah this structure right i mean the mobile home was a huge issue there's other issues with the house right now and so hence why this company is going in there and trying to move forward to bring it up to a, a okay. livable standard okay yeah i understand that okay <coughs> i thought maybe it was yeah. all of both like and the duplex and right. the no okay and they can't do that until the zoning is changed right. or not right. or you know it has to they can't move forward until we move forward correct got you Okay, I got it now. Is everybody else good? Yep. Any questions? Any more questions of Mr. Saavedra? No. Um, applicants and parties, do you have any questions of Mr. Saavedra? Who are the applicants and parties in this, please? If you don't mind raising your hand. Do we? Nobody? Do we have any, do we have any applicants here? I do not see the applicant okay. here. Okay. So we can, so there are no applicants, parties, witnesses, or interested persons. <coughs> Yeah. There is there interested are. person, okay. but the applicant is not here. Okay, I got you. So who are the interested persons in this for this particular hearing? Yes, sir. Okay, would you, I don't know who wants to who wants to come up first? Sir? Okay. Can we flip a coin if you want? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, sir, you have up to five minutes. Um, okay. If he got notice, he's a party. What we got here, I live at 219 Sumner Place, right across the street from this thing. I've been here since 1994. Sir, I'm sorry. Did you did you receive a notice? Oh yes. Okay, so you would fall under parties just to clean that up and make sure we're we're on track. So you have up to 10 minutes, sir. <laughs> okay. What we got is is uh, I'm not sure where the picture is. Is the green little thing? No, no, yeah, yeah, no. Do the 
please. Good luck. Oh, you want to move? You want to move the to the next picture? Yeah. Back to the trader. Oh yes, sir. Could you state your name, please, for the for the record, Mike Anderson? Thank you. That's right here okay. at the top. Can't read it. What they have done? I live at 219 Sumner Place, directly right across the street from this. Right mm -hmm. here. I've been there since 1994. With the trader house being there, it was all slanted out when they first built that. A guy by name is Dan Grace, which is passed away now, but he was going to pull the trader completely out of there and have a full shell there as a house. But what happened is he got crossways with his dad. His dad turned around, sold the place, and they turned around, sold the place again, again, again. And now we got this nightmare right now. They pulled the trailer out. Nobody's lived there for over three years. It's got black mold in it. They, when they come in, AMF come out and tore it apart, what happened was they tore it apart, found the black mold, they left. And they came back, and we told them, and they found the black mold. The San Juan County came out. They came out and checked it. They said they wouldn't even come in and look at it because it was so bad. The basement is full of black mold. So basically what they need to do by law is abate it, wrap it in plastic, and take the whole thing apart and be done with it. But now it's all open to public right now. You can see stuff flying out there every day and every night when the wind blows. And it's not pretty. If you went over there yourself right now, walked down them steps and tried to smell it, you couldn't stand the smell. It's so bad. So basically what they're trying to do is pass this to get this up to code well you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars to even do anything with it right. and you're looking at twenty thirty thousand dollars to evacuate it so i mean if they want to spend that money and evacuate it and start over the best thing to do is put another trailer out there and start all over because right now it's it's a public hazard there but it lives there okay. and that's all i got to say about that Thank i you, mean Mr. It's, Anderson. it's cut and dried yeah. These guys all got pictures of it and everything else about it. All right, Mr. Saavedra, would you do you have any questions of, of Mr. Anderson? I don't have any questions for Mr. Anderson. And there isn't an applicant here, so. Yeah, um, it would always be best for the applicant to address some of those specific questions. Um, AMF was planning to, to rehab the structure. All I can say to Mr. Anderson's question is that if it does not meet the building code standards, they will not get a certificate. Part of rehabbing the structure obviously is addressing all the issues, including <coughs> black mold. You can't have black mold and get a certificate of occupancy. So the reason why AMF is kind of left ways is uh, in part because of the zoning hearing. And then in fairness to AMF, we had this land use scheduled a month ago. And so that did not happen, so therefore this kind of been in limbo until there's some type of decision going forward. Okay. Thank you. Mayor Stilmer. Yes, ma'am. So what we're dealing with is the zoning. The, the, the building right. and the condition and the remodeling is somebody else's decision and, and uh, will be dealt with by the county in compliance. Correct. The Correct. city of Aztec does not have a building inspector, does not house a building division. So what, what the city has contracted with San Juan County is that before any structure can get a building permit, or get a certificate of occupancy, they have to get zoning approval from the city of Aztec. So this is, to answer your question again, is only the zoning. Right. This is only okay. the, because even if this structure was to be knocked down and another structure is going to be moved in there, we wouldn't allow that because another, that it's not, you can't put another trailer or other dwelling unit with an MH district when there's a requirement that only one dwelling unit is required. Only one unit is allowed. So this is only the zoning. If they're okay. going to have multiple structures it needs to have the correct z under the correct zoning okay thank you okay and I saw a couple other hands involved in this particular if you wouldn't mind please and when you get up here please state your name for the record my name is Kaylee Murphy I live on 1414 Martin Avenue um, my great-grandmother lives on Sumner um, I think it's a big issue because we have many kids that live um, along the lines of that corner right there, and I feel like it's a huge safety issue um, where the zoning will be. There's already a huge um, issue with 
um, the way people come across right there. Um, like there's, it's a huge blind spot. Um, we already have enough issues with the people that come in and out of there um, with stealing stuff and a variety of that. And I feel like if it's a multi-family house, I feel like it's going to bring in more um, bad issues within it. And like he said, the um, mold and everything else that's within the home is more about health and a safety issue. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions of Ms. Murphy? Mr. Saavedra? Any commissioners? Okay. All right. Um, there's no interested persons nor other parties, so I'm going to go ahead and close this to testimony and open it up for discussion amongst commission. Does anybody have anything they'd like to discuss or add to this particular land use item? Mr. Mayor, yes, I just really want to emphasize that our decision is about the zoning right. and that the condition of the properties, uh, whatever they actually are, will be made by other entities and taken care of, hopefully, by the county. Yeah, and, and I think that's an important point. Um, mm -hmm. we, uh, and I don't doubt any of the testimony, you know, I, I, as far as what you're saying, as far as the mold and some of the potential hazards there. Um, but that is not specifically what we are here to address tonight. We're here for the zoning change and anything that will be looked at, you know, by the county building inspector, by, you know, the, the departments that handle, you know, the habitability and so forth are not our purview. Those are going to be handled by the folks at the county. So we just, it's not that we don't appreciate your testimony and what you're saying and that they may be valid points, but we're not you know, we're not here deciding that part at all. We're just deciding whether the zoning can be changed or not. So they could potentially rehab or, you know, move in another direction as they may find out. So I appreciate the testimony though. Um, with that said, I would go ahead and entertain a motion for this particular land use item. Right. Well, actually, anybody? I mean, we got to get to it. I know. I'm are you going to go ahead? <laughs> I move to approve zone change 19-01, a request from Aaron Fishburn for a zone change from the MH Mobile Home District to the R2 Multiple Family District for property located at 1509, 1507, 1505 Martin Avenue as Tech, New Mexico. Second. We have a motion and a second. Carla, would you please call the roll? Mayor Silver. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Lewis? Aye. Commissioner Randall? Aye. Commissioner Sykes? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Okay, and land use item C, conditional use permit 19-01. CUP 1901 is a request to allow a dog grooming kennel slash dog boarding and cat. I don't want to discriminate. Um, <laughs> at 1603 West Aztec Boulevard. The reason this is coming before you is that the property is located in the C2 General Commercial Zoning District. It's not specific if dog grooming, cat grooming is allowed. Um, I mean, I, I, let me back up. Dog grooming is allowed, cat grooming is allowed. The boarding of animals, however, is, is void from the C2 district. Um, Ms. Scott, I'm sorry, Ms. Jill Cox is requesting a conditional use to come into conformity. Now this property actually housed a vet, so they used to board animals there um, prior. And talking to Ms. Cox, I asked if there was any permit on file that allow it. It was basically, again, just one of those grandfathered situations. The property had set vacant, so therefore it has to come into compliance with the underlying zoning code. And to be safe, we're bringing it forward to the, the City Commission so that there's no issues because this is a very gray area within the code. It's, it's actually absent. And in fact, Ms. Cox, uh, a few years ago, actually had requested the same thing on Maine. So this is essentially for the commissioners that were here at the time is, is basically just a repeat of that. And examining the property though, you can see that it's located in a commercial zoning district. Um, it's right by Big O, Storage Shed, and Aztec Boulevard. So you can see there's not 
um, <coughs> residential, there's not many residential within close proximity. And so as a result of the location, the, the use, and the previous use, the community development is recommending approval. With one condition is that any alterations or changes to the structure, San Juan building division, uh, the fire marshal need to be aware so that there's no issues with the building code. And with that, I will stand for questions. Anybody? Anybody have any questions of Mr. Saavedra? Ms. Cox, yes. do you have any questions of Mr. Saavedra? Okay. All right. Hearing none, I would ask for our applicant to come and, I guess, talk to us about this. Well, that building was built for my dad as a veterinary clinic 20-some years ago, and it was built for that. So I'm just asking that you allow me to do the boarding and grooming. The boarding is inside. There is an outside yard. They're never outside, like, at night or anything like that. So I do do boarding and, boarding and grooming there. So I just would like to continue my business where I left off that I had on Main Street. Okay. So. All right. Um, are there any other uh, parties or interested parties in this? I don't think there are any. Does anybody have any questions of Ms. Cox? Regarding this no. land use item? No, no. Okay. Uh, hearing none, I will close the hearing to testimony and allow discussion amongst the commissioners. Anybody have any further discussion or anything to add? No. Okay. Hearing none, we will go ahead and entertain our third motion for land use hearing. Mayor, move to approve conditional use permit 19 01 at request from Jill Cox for a conditional use permit to allow a dog grooming and kennel for property located at 1603. West Aztec Boulevard with the following conditions that San Juan County Building Division and Fire Marshal need to be aware of any changes or alterations to the building structure. Second. I have a motion and a second. Carla, would you please call the roll? Mayor Snowbird? Aye. Mayor Folks and Pride? Aye. Commissioner Seitz? Aye. Commissioner Lewis? Aye. Commissioner Randall? Aye. Motion passes 5 to 0. Okay. Thank you. And let's see, I want to make sure I do this right. All right, that was our final land use hearing. Is there, I'm sorry, I want to make sure. Do I need to close anything out? I just closed out testimony. We're good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next up, our commissioner, city manager, and department head <coughs> reports. Um, we'll start with Mr. Mueller. I just want to remind everybody this Saturday night at 10 o'clock, we're having the power outage. Uh, to oh, get some yeah. work done on the Aztec system as well as the Farmington system. It's scheduled for 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And um, it might even get done a little bit earlier, but that's uh, the plan now. Also, the Employee Association is having a potluck May 2nd. Everybody's invited. It's uh, for Cinco de Mayo celebration. So it's good to that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, sir. Um, Ms. Onsicker? I don't have a report. Okay. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll go to department heads and then we'll do the commissioners last. Any department heads wish to make a report? Mr. Blackburn? Mayor, commissioners, um, I'd just like to thank um, public works staff and the park staff uh, for our uh, success in our spring cleanup event as, as well as the e-waste event. I also wanted to thank Mr. Joe Sanchez with Waste Management and his uh, staff. They were there for us through the whole thing and I think it was a big <coughs> success this year. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sanchez, thank you. Any other department reports? Mr. Saavedra? So really quick, uh, just to remind this city commission that there is a NMLZO land use mm -hmm. workshop coming up. Um, so it's a good good opportunity to learn more about the, the exciting world of land use and variances and conditional uses and some of the stuff that we get stumbled on. So, you know, I, it's open for everybody. Um, we don't discriminate. <laughs> what are you laughing so, at? Just, just wanted to keep that on your radar. I know <coughs> the mayor had attended one in Clovis. I believe Commissioner Fry is uh, signed up to go. Um, if at anything, it's good to, to know some of these technical, because land use is... Oh, it's in Clovis okay. again? No, it's in no. Albuquerque. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Only you got to I should have went this year. Yeah, land use, again, it's, it's, it's a moving target. I mean, there's nothing that's, there's one thing that's in code. I mean, the code is in black and white, but we live in a world of color. And so 
we try to get some clarification when these things come up. Um, <coughs> this training is, is a good way to do that. And, you know, I, I went to it last year, like Mr. Savager said, and, and it's not the most exciting thing in the world to do, but I did learn a lot. And now when I do see some of these things, I, I look at it through that lens. And some of the, you know, some of the experts in their field kind of explain to you, you know, the unintended consequences. It seems cut and dry, but like he said, you know, there's, there's definite layers, you know, shades of different color, and you have to really think before, you know, you approve some of these things and think a little bit further ahead. So, I mean, if you can make it, especially if it's close, it's in Albuquerque, I would highly recommend going. Um, let's see, no other department reports, so let's just uh, move into commissioner reports. Commissioner Lewis? Um, one brief one, uh, I don't know if anybody knew uh, J.B. Laughlin, who was a longtime resident in Farmington and San Juan County. He passed away yesterday mm -hmm. at the age I'm of 92. Sorry. So, just wanted to let people know that. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Randall. No report. Commissioner Seip. Um, just a couple things that I've did, I had attended since the last commission meeting. Um, I met with um, the Boones, um, well, Misty Boone, the ones that have been having trouble with the ditch, the farmer's ditch. Mm -hmm. um, I met with them and, and her dad, Mike Wells, with Steve and Stephen. We went up there and actually walked the ditch bank and looked at kind of what what some of the issues are up there and um, so it's a continuing um, Stevens continuing Mr. Saavedra is continuing to work on that about some compliance of some things that the ditch company needs to do and and some things that they can't do so we're still working on that one but I think they appreciated us going up there and actually looking at it so um, and then I did miss the EDAB meeting but uh, Commissioner Fry went, so I'll let her talk about that. I, I went to a preschool e Easter egg hunt, so <laughs> instead of EDAP. Um, Friday night, um, I was asked to, um, at the feet oh, of clay, yeah. judge the, <laughs> with Commissioner Lewis and with Mr. Sanchez from Waste Management, we were the judges for a recycle art contest at uh, at feet of clay and I have to say it was it was a lot of fun um, not anything I'd ever done before but <laughs> some interesting pieces um, everything was recycled on the on the art and, yeah. and uh, it was it amazing was, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um, yesterday I did go to um, a Northwest Mexico seniors executive meeting we are still looking for an executive director um, and it's been eight months now mm -hmm. and we've had one applicant so, I mean, we're still struggling with that. Um, Thursday, I will go to the MPO meeting. It'll be our first one in Kirtland. Um, Kirtland has now joined the MPO, so um, it'll be at their city hall in Kirtland. Um, and I just wanted to say that uh, Mr. Jeff Kiley is retiring um, very soon. <laughs> they are going to have a, so he will be there. <clears throat> um, he's with the COG. Um, council of Governments, and then re just recently, um, the Council of Governments took over the the management of the MPO organization. So um, he's he's going to be missed. I don't know how many years that he has served, but 26. Is it 26? Long time. And they're having a retirement thing in Gallup for him on Friday. I think it's this Friday, isn't it? In G but it's in Gallup. <laughs> so. Um, and also, I just wanted to ask about budget workshops. Um, we're coming up, May gets busy really fast, <laughs> and I know that we have to do our preliminary budget stuff by the end of May, so I think I just Yeah, we're looking at, uh, okay. not next week, but the week after, uh, or within those two weeks start the process. Okay, cool. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem? Well, I met with uh, Hill Corp. Uh, executive I think all the rest of you had already done that while I was gone and again they're confirming their commitment to be a responsible community partner and to follow the city regulations and meet the conditions that are placed upon um, the wells and it was it was a pleasant conversation with Nick I can't remember his last name. Piatic. Piatic. Yeah. Or Piatic. Or, yeah, okay. I'm not sure yeah. That's good. One of the two. <laughs> uh, I attended San Juan Safe Communities Initiative uh, last week and the uh, presentation was about um, children in the school system in Farmington that are homeless. It was eye-opening to know that there are about 200 children that are 
actually considered homeless, and homeless covers people, children living in cars, parks, abandoned buildings, buses, trains, and it's also good to know that there's someone watching over this population of folks and, and helping them with services that they need and really trying their best to keep them in, uh, in school. Uh, Kirk Carpenter was there. He said we do have some homeless individuals in the Aztec school system. He didn't have a count, uh, but uh, it's, it's good to know that these folks are being watched over and that there's assistance. And San Juan County Partnership has an, uh, a housing uh, program that assists people to get into uh, housing and to either subsidize or help uh, pay rent for a period of time. So. Uh, all these folks are working together to uh, help these children. They've had a total of 239 in the Farmington school system, and I would bet there's people overlooked, you know, that are, are in that situation. Uh, I did attend the county commission meeting, and I heard the uh, presentation by the Hor Historical Society. I did ask um, Patty that if uh, the if the county had any uh, help with the possibility of needing a larger space, and she said she didn't hear anything about that. Um, they did talk about uh, county waste management and uh, the need to uh, potentially increase fees. That's in the county. That's not our deal. It's the county, uh, but the consideration of uh, of closing the landfill on Sunday did is that if that's going to happen? It's going to happen once all the permits are being filed. Okay, so that will uh, delay the increase in fees for the county, but we are affected by the uh, closing of the landfill on Sunday. Uh, the concern that was expressed was the possibility of illegal dumping with the landfill closed on Sunday. So I'm sure that will be uh, something that will need to be watched. They mentioned that the 2020 census uh, will be coming up before we know it and how very important it is and uh, that every person in New Mexico needs to be counted. So. I'm sure we'll all be hearing information about that. Uh, April 2020 is when that will begin. I uh, attended the EDAB meeting, and uh, everybody was excited about the capital outlay and uh, that uh, we'll, ha we'll have the opportunity to finish North Main and then get going again on uh, the arterial. Uh, the chamber reported that they're going to be having a membership drive and uh, seeking board members. Um, I personally would really like to see the chamber uh, get going again. I think it's an important uh, a part of our community and can be helpful to the businesses. So I hope that will be working. We talked about uh, film ordinance and fees uh, with Netflix going into uh, Albuquerque and films being such a popular uh, thing in New Mexico these days, uh, Aztec could jump on board by providing uh, the assets that we have that would be of interest to the filming industry. And uh, it, it was a very interesting discussion and that we have somebody amongst us, Andrew, that has been a former liaison uh, to the film industry so he can give us some advice and help on hopefully tapping into that as uh, uh, an area of, uh, for our own economic diversification. Uh, I also attended, well, I wanted to mention that uh, uh, everybody at EDAB is really on board for the Sunday alcohol sales of moving forward with getting that put on a ballot. And uh, I'm working with Carla, who has found out some uh, current information on how to do that, and she's setting up a time frame for us to get it in the March 2020 uh, ballot. Uh, so that we wouldn't have to hold a special election. So we'll get that going, and, uh, uh, and that can be a boon to economic development, too, or at least not a roadblock. Um, I attended the immigration panel discussion in Farmington that was led by Chief Hebby. 
Is that how you pronounce mm -hmm. that? Hebe. Yeah. Uh, along with, uh, I believe, six other panelists uh, that deal with uh, immigrants, families, uh, issues with people trying to get citizenship, uh, issues of victims. I was very impressed with the policing efforts and also the coordination and communication between the different departments that deal with a population of about 2,000 people in San Juan County uh, that are in the immigrant population. Uh, they work with compassion and uh, respect and uh, I was just really uh, impressed with the communication between all those departments. So that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. And, and on that note, because <clears throat> I also was able to go to that, that panel, uh, I know Chief Hill was there, not in official capacity, but he and I have met uh, with some of the folks that were on the panel previously. Um, similar approach here in Aztec as far as the community policing efforts and um, interacting with with the migrant and immigrant community. So thank you again, Chief. Um, just very briefly, uh, Mr. Patch, no, uh, I think there was a thing on the presentation about the, the community fair that was last weekend. Man, I'm, I'm losing track now. Yes. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, but I was uh, able to go there for a few minutes at the beginning. We kicked it off with Jero TC, did a quick color guard. There was uh, uh, several other groups there, the San Juan County Fire Department brought a truck out, and like I said, our, my students were able to do a color guard, so uh, we were also doing fundraising, so we were kind of bouncing all over the place. Uh, but I just want to point that out. It was, uh, and there was also a thing, as a board me member of ECHO, there was, uh, I think it was called Destination Exploration at the Farmington Museum. So there was a lot going on this past weekend, and that was... Uh, uh, a pretty fun event. They had different stations for the kids. They had a little map, like a treasure map, and they had to mark off each station and do different activities. There was a dancing station. There was a thing where they did some, like a little treasure hunt, and they got their paper stamped, and then they got to come back to the front desk and get some little prizes, you know, kind of thing to take home with them. So that was fun to see. Um, and it was pretty well attended, and I had heard that, you know, I got there kind of on the tail end because I was down here at the Boys and Girls Club, and I guess it was even more well attended before I got there and even when I was there it was pretty busy so it's always cool to see little kids out there doing you know doing cool stuff going to the museum and and getting involved um, also last weekend I was invited to go on a tour of Chaco Canyon which um, I've been several times before but uh, assistant speaker Lujan our congressman Ben Ray Lujan um, congresswoman Holland from Albuquerque uh, Congressman Grijalva from Arizona and Congressman Lowenthal who is the chair of the subcommittee for uh, natural resources and also President Nez of the Navajo Nation were there amongst others uh, went to some of the some of the the surrounding areas in the 10 mile buffer around Chaco Canyon and they were discussing a piece of legislation that is being introduced by those folks to legally establish the 10 mile boundary around Chaco Canyon uh, cultural and it was just it was exciting to to get to learn some more of the stuff you know like I said I've, I've been to it several times and I'm kind of read into some of the issues but it's always interesting to hear from some of the other folks the interested groups and the residents of course that were there and then there was a, a hearing in Santa Fe the next day discussing it with some of those same folks and I was also able to go there and um it was a privilege to be invited, and, and I always uh, think it's great to be able to, to learn a little bit more about some of the things going on and, the, you know, kind of the emphasis behind them and why we're doing them. So that's really all that I have as a report. So I think we're finished, folks. So go ahead and adjourn at 714. Thank you.